Hello everyone, this is Alexander from Galileo Sky. In this video, I'll tell you how to connect various equipment operating via the Modbus protocol to Galileo Sky devices. The Modbus protocol can be used to transfer data through digital ports, including RS-232 and RS-485 in RTU or ASCII mode. All Galileo Sky 7X trackers are equipped with RS-485 interface as well as an RS-232 interface, except the 7XC model. Modbus is the standard industrial protocol and it is supported by a variety of hardware. Simple and convenient data parsing expands the list of connected devices and allows to integrate equipment without creating complex scripts. The process of data receiving from digital ports using the Modbus protocol is quite simple. Let's figure out how to do this. As an example, we took the MSU21 climate sensor with a light sensor connected to it. This sensor is equipped with RS-485 interface and supports Modbus RTU protocol. In order to read data from it, we connect the sensors to the device inputs and supply power to it. Launch the configurator software and go to the tracker settings. On the Serial Ports tab in the RS-485 field, select the Modbus peripheral type and click the Apply button. Now go to the Modbus tab and press the Add Device button. In the window that appears, you need to set the network parameters of the connected equipment. You can find this data in the user manual for this sensor. Now let's configure the sensor. We need to specify the port type, mode, board rate and other parameters and then click Apply button. In the Configurator software, when configuring Modbus, addressing starts from 1. As you can see, the created sensor appears in the list on the left side of the window. Now we can set up registers for the sensor. For this, we press the Add Register button. A new register appears in the right margin of the window. The register parameters must be specified in the documentation for the connected equipment. When setting up the sense registers, please note that different manufacturers can start numbering from either register 0 or 1st. Typically, different sensors transmit several parameters in different registers. In this case, you'll need to create a register for each of the parameters that you want to read. So, we set up the register. First, you need to specify the type of it. The following options are available. DO, discrete output coil, discrete output which supports reading and writing data. DI, discrete input contacts, this is the discrete input, and only data reading is possible. AO, analog output holding register or analog output, both reading and writing are possible. And AI, analog input registers, this is the analog input, uh, where it's possible to read only. Next, we configure the address of the register in which the data is transmitted. Data type and the dimension of the received data is bit, byte, 2 bytes, 4 bytes or float. In case if data is transmitted in more than one byte, you need to indicate the direction of bytes reading. Big Endian should be selected if the most significant byte is transmitted first. Little Endian if the least significant byte is transmitted first. Also, in the register settings, you can tick in the box signed. The swapped checkbox must be selected if you plan to process data in the EasyLogic script and use the swapBuff function. Now you can assign a Modbus tag where data from a custom register will be automatically placed. Now, when the register is configured, click the Apply button. Let's check that everything is correct. To do this, click on the button Real-Time Mode. If the sensor settings were made correctly, then its name will be colored in green, and in the value of the configured register field, we'll see the sensor's value. As you can see, we get the current value. Let's make sure that these values correspond to reality. I cover the light sensor with my hand, and as you can see, the readings fail. I release the sensor, and the values increase. 
the sensor is OK and it is configured correctly. So now let's see what we can do with the received data. The simplest thing is to send the sensor readings to the monitoring software. To do this, go to the protocol tab and mark the selected Modbus tag for transmission to the server. After that, we click the apply button. That's it. Now we'll receive values from the sensor on the software. However, that's not all. Let's make an example of a simple easy logic algorithm and see how we can process data from the sensor. Let's say that we want to turn the lights on when the light level is poor. We connected the LED line to the output zero. Go to the easy logic tab and start creating the algorithm. Let the algorithm start with the device start block. We add a 5 second delay block, then we compare the value in the Modbus 0 tag with some threshold, let's say 30. And if the value in the tag is lower, we open output 0, and if it is bigger, we close it. After changing the state of the input, we return both branches back to the delay. We save the algorithm and load it into the device. After that, restart the tracker. Let me remind you that the script starts working after the device start. Now let's see how our script works. I cover the light sensor with my hand and have a look. It turns on. Now I remove the hand and it switches off. As you remember, we put a delay of 5 seconds before the next check. So it works correctly. In just a few minutes, we connected and configured a digital light sensor that transmits data via the Modbus protocol. Also, we set up data transmission to the software and made a simple script that turns the light on when there is not enough light. As I said, Working with equipment that supports the Modbus data transfer protocol is easy and convenient, especially if you use Galileo Sky 7X trackers. <laughs> That's all for now. Alexander from Galileo Sky was with you. Goodbye, everyone.